Hello boys and girls, welcome to part 20 of the EJ25 build. We have one more after this and that's it. In this one we continue with the cutout. I'm gonna finish the actual cutout, finish painting it, mount it, then we're gonna move on to the wiring. I'm gonna show you how I wired it with a switch on the inside in the center console. So guys, as always, remember to subscribe. Just, just do it now. I mean, why wouldn't you? Like the video if you did, dislike the video if you didn't, and comment. Enjoy! two coats I may end up putting on a third coat you can see a little bit of metal through the paint but I actually went online looking for a vacuum solenoid and then I remembered I have one I took it out I took the evap solenoid from the Subaru uh, way way before and I can use it actually it's got an out and an in for vacuum and it's powered it's a powered switch these this is a quarter inch of ID inside diameter and this is 3 16 and our this already had this guy here was it yeah it was from from here this little adapter thing 3 16 to one quarter so I can use this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a 3 16 from underneath the car from the valve all the way up under the hood to this actually to this here and then I can use these two hoses this is all parts from the car from the same car stock parts so I'm not buying anything as well I, do, I am gonna have to end up buying a switch that's just you know a few dollars anyways so I just need to make the, the vacuum connections one is gonna go to the valve and the other is gonna go to this vacuum over here and right now it's plugged but uh, I'm gonna reuse this is the same size one quarter well almost it's just it's slightly bigger but it should the holes should stretch enough and I actually had to dig out this plug it was zip tied way underneath the intake manifold I never knew I was gonna need it I'm gonna cut this I just need the plug and you know a little bit of the harness of the wires it's only two wires I'm probably gonna mount this maybe here this or maybe not we'll see maybe underneath like that yeah, probably something over here. Maybe I can find another spot. And uh, connect this to the switch, which is going to be inside somewhere. Okay, so I cut the switch 
out. Okay, so this is what I cut, a little extension. So right now, no power is going to the solenoid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see if it's, without it being powered, is it working or if it's not working? Yeah, I mean, if it's closed or open. Okay, so I cannot blow or suck any air on any of these, okay? So, which means it's closed. So the switch would be off at this point. I mean, at least that's how I'm gonna wire it. So now if I give it power, okay, so there's the click. So, it, which means it's working, it's opening and closing. So let's see what happens if it stays powered. So I'm gonna blow air into this one. So air is actually coming out through here. So if I block this, I got no air. Okay, so it's working. So this should be good. All right, guys, a little update. Check this out. Three coats. It took three coats to cover everything. Now, so the actual valve and the, the butterfly and the body for it, whatever you want to call it, it is stainless steel and so was this pipe but I you know I painted everything just to match the color and basically the welds the welds would rust pretty much right away but I gotta say it turned out pretty good yeah this is still it's not easy to open with uh, my hand anyway started running the 316s hose and decided to go this route here popped a few plastic push pins and there you go you can see it inside now right there you see where the hose kind of disappears to the right i cut the plastic off right there so when i push this cover back on it won't pinch it and this is the only part that i don't like but there is really isn't any other way the down pipe is on the other side so i wanted to stay away from that So if I were to go on this side, this is very close to the downpipe, so it's got to be, it's only going to be exposed over here. I may end up covering this up with something, maybe another rubber hose or something. But then I'm going to zip tie it up to this brake line there and go straight up. Okay, so I got it hooked up temporarily just to show you so the, the bracket on the solenoid I managed to make it straight before it was at 90 degrees so I just put it in the vise hammered it a bit and made it flat so I could mount it over here this bolt is actually it used to be right here and now its new home is there anyways this is ground that's going to stay like this this green wire that's going to be ground for the solenoid this ground for the switch i'm going to get ground from the inside so i don't need to run this wire from here to the inside this is going to get its own ground the only wire that i need to run is this one from the switch from the solenoid to the switch and this wire here this brown wire that's connected to the battery right now this i will connect on the inside again to ignition or accessory whatever most likely ignition so if for example i forget to turn it off when i turn the key off it this will cut power to the switch and it will cut power to the solenoid obviously so right now we got power now all i need to do is create i don't remember which if this is right or or not if it's wrong, then I'll just switch these vacuum lines. I forgot which uh, which one was open. So yeah, now it's just a matter of testing it. All right, I'm gonna start it and flip the switch and you're gonna watch if it works.
Okay, so it works, but there's an issue. It will not close when the car is running. Maybe when it's on low on RPMs. Okay, camera got a little wet. Once I get it all situated, I'm gonna let the engine warm up, let it come down on RPMs. I got it set to 1000 at idle, 1100, somewhere along there. And I'm gonna see if it's actually gonna close. All right, so here's what's going on right now. Now I've had other switches right here where these two holes are. I had this orange switch and this blue switch. Now one of them was to turn on and off the access port 2.0 back in the day. These switches were done 10, 12, 13 years ago, a long time ago. But now, as you all may know, I, do, I did obtain the 3.0 for the E85. Anyway, so this gets its own switch because it's hooked up to the OBD2 uh, constant power. So I can flip it on and off anytime I want to. Then this other uh, blue switch for water is the stock water spray, intercooler water, water spray. Now, the stock one, when you press it, it works for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, I can't remember. It, this still works. But to keep it, to keep a constant spray, I installed this switch. What I do is just flip it on and it just stays on until, well, forever, I tell, I tell, until I turn it off. So now, now this red switch is going to be the exhaust cutout. I'm simply going to cut another hole next to those two. Ignore most of these wires. So I have ground here. I'm going to use this as ground. One of these wires is power, switched power. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so now I got to make me a hole. This one is slightly different. I wish I had the same one. It's very similar, it looks almost the same. Well, not really. Anyway, but it's a little bit wider, so... The hole must be bigger. So I'm just gonna draw it out and make one. got it hooked up so blue water spray orange access port yep off and the new the new guy okay let me see if I can hear the click It's working. And the inner cooler. And that's wor also working. Spraying water on the engine now. All right. Time to put it back together.
Hello boys and girls, again, twice in the same video because it's been months. It's been, I think I did this cutout, what you just saw, I think I did it back in February maybe, maybe March, I don't remember. Right now it's August, it's August. Took a long time for me to get this video out. I spent months and months trying to get it up, trying doing the break-in miles. I just had no time, you know, driving 20 miles, maybe 30, once a week or so. Anyways, this is what's going on. So you've seen the cutout. Now this, at this stage, this car has been tuned. We're back to the switch. So this is where I mounted. Here I have the ground. Remember, this is the stock. EVAP uh, solenoid then I have this wire actually goes through the firewall along there inside the cabin and you've seen the switch so that's the same now I did this while I was still breaking the engine in and I could not test on it open throttle because you know obviously I was breaking the engine in so when I finally could it was working fine I could open it only open it while I was just uh, cruising along, but I could not close it. If I were to turn the switch off, nothing would happen. Because I found out later and it was a kind of a duh moment for me. The reason why it didn't turn off when I would flip the switch off, because this has a turbo. Now there is vacuum when you're just cruising along, there is vacuum inside the intake. Anything after the turbo, there's a vacuum when you're just cruising along. The second you give it open throttle, anything after the turbo, the intercooler, the intake, everything becomes pressurized from the turbo. So instead of vacuum, you get pressure. I hope I'm calling it right, but you get what I'm saying. So what was going on, while the switch was on, while the solenoid was on, if I were to finally give it you know, boost after the break-in, while tuning actually the valve the cutout would close on its own so i'm so i'm thinking what's going on why is it closing you know it's because this valve remained open and the uh, the pressure build up in the intake where it was connected still in the same spot instead of vacuum it was getting you know plus 10 to 15 20 psi whatever the uh, turbo was boosting so then I thought, okay, so I got to find a, a different spot where I, I have vacuum all the time, especially when I'm at open throttle. So I switched this line, this vacuum line that you know, goes into the solenoid. I see, I remember I have the inlet pipe. It's all kept off. I'm not using these openings at all. There's one, two, three, and there's a four, fourth one right there. I figured the closer to the turbo I get, the the best vacuum I'm going to get. And I only need minus two or so at open throttle. That didn't work. So then kind of by accident, well, not really because I actually could then after, well, you know, after the tune, I could actually give it uh, the beans. So I turned the switch off and I went open throttle and it didn't close. Why? Because the solenoid is airtight. When it's off, when there's no power to it, it doesn't, uh, it remains shut, it's airtight. It actually needs pressure to close. So what I do, when I want it to open, I, I need to be cruising, I need to be, I need to have vacuum in the intake manifold. I just flip it on and off right away. Then it's gonna remain on at all times, only because it's airtight. Meaning this, this inside here, it's airtight. But when I finally wanna turn it off, I flip the switch on, I give it a throttle on enough to create boost and I flip it off. So when I turn it on, I give it gas, it creates positive pressure, the flap closes on the cutout and I turn it off. And that while, you know, I'm accelerating. It can it, you know, it can last for half a second. And then it's off. And that's it. It's fixed.